Well, today is the day, and we have the big reveal of the next movie masterpiece for the Transformers movie line. And today we are revealing Transformers masterpiece movie MPM 13 Blackout. No surprise by many fans, this was speculated and teased a while back that Blackout was going to be the next movie masterpiece. And the question is, what did they do this time around that could be such a big change from what we already have gotten with our leader class studio series Blackout? Because that was also a very ambitious release. It was also a high price point. What do you do this time around that could make it ever so slightly different? What makes this the better version? What is going on here? How does it compare to the other stuff? Because there is a little bit of history going on with that character in comparison to his scale and stuff like that. Let's do this. Let's dive into it and break it down. So number one, this news comes courtesy of the Hasbro China Weibo website. Uh, they posted all the information. They're talking about how there is going to be pre-orders that will be going live 8 p.m. China time. So if you're from the Chinese region and you're excited and you want to get your hands on this, this will be available tonight. Although judging by um, how time zones work, uh, probably live right now as you're hearing my voice on the other side of the globe. So what is happening? How 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 is this different from the, the last one? Uh, I've messed with practically every blackout toy that's ever existed, including some stuff that you should probably never own, like a fast action battler or maybe some, you know, robot heroes. I oh, know robot heroes aren't too bad, but I, you know, and so what is, what is going to be different this time around? And what I really liked was at first we got just a bunch of photos from Hasbro China, but then afterwards Takara Tomi put out a fantastic video that was narrated and hosted by one of the new fresh face Takara designers, uh, Tomo Tatsumi. And uh, poor Tomo, he looked so nervous doing that video. But he's a new guy, a uh, new designer. You probably never heard of his name before. And I guess he was charged with doing really uh, one of the more easier kind of design jobs for a masterpiece because what he really had to do was make it larger than the studio series and give it better veneering, give it more accuracy and give it some extra fine detail that really makes it 100% movie accurate. The first thing we're going to address, the very first thing we're going to address is size. Because one of the biggest negatives of the Studio Series 1, and don't get me wrong, Studio Series 1 was a fantastic figure. But one of the biggest negatives was the Studio Series 1 was limited by its price point. Studio Series was always touted as, well, this is all about, you know, all the figures being in scale with each other. And unfortunately, Blackout was the first time they said, look, we wanted everything to be in scale with each other. But unfortunately, due to the limitations of the leader class price point, we could not keep that with Blackout. So compromises had to be made, limitations, part pieces, everything like that. And that 2018 leader class came out and people liked it. It was a good figure. Very well designed. Does have some breakage points somewhere. Uh, I've messed with two Grindor retools of them in the past, uh, finding them in the secondary market, and all of them are broken in the arms. I'm actually going to probably I'll bring one on to the live stream to show you people like how common it is that there's certain breaking areas on him. But the point is that the Studio Series 1 was a fine figure, but it did have its issues. And I really feel if you're a fan of this character, this might be the better route despite the finance issues. But we'll get into that afterwards. So, number one, size, pretty awesome, because they managed to maintain a proper scale kind of size. So, the robot mode height is going to be 29 centimeters. To give perspective for people that own the other movie masterpieces, the Megatron on the Decepticon side for the 2007 movie is 30 centimeters. Now, depending on different source material, and I had to pull this up from different books that I've had throughout the years... Megatron is usually a head and sometimes a little more taller than Blackout. So it's accurate in the sense that Blackout is shorter, but it's not super short compared to, let's say, the actual movie material. But it does keep a proper scale where Blackout is shorter than Megatron, but taller than everyone else. So that's really good. Where unfortunately, Studio Series just couldn't pull that off, unfortunately. So that's, that's the first thing I want to point out. Uh, number two, the colors. Uh, unlike the Studio Series one that had the limitations of, again, a retail leader class price point, 
this one is able to get all those paint details done properly. According to this listing here, 200 different paint decos and paint apps and everything like that added to really make it pop and match its movie interpretation. Now we'll start with the alt mode. So what's going on with the alt mode that's different this time around that really is superior? So it has, you know, the same things that all pretty much a lot of past blackout toys had, a freewheeling uh, spinning propellers, the blades, both the ro back rotor and the front rotor. They're all free spinning, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they included some extra blast accessories, which are activatable in both molds. You could put them in the robot mode. You could put it in the, the alt mode. In the alt mode here, it's used for the two turrets. You have these two little blast accessories, so that's a nice little touch. And the big difference between the two and everything else here is the rear door hatch. So with the Studio Series 1, you had a rear door that kind of opened up sideways, and it was more so due to the transformation. It wasn't really used for storage, but it wasn't screen accurate, or even more so accurate to the vehicle that Blackout is. So that's another big thing, too, because Blackout is the, the MH-53 Pavlo helicopter, which has that opening hatch in the back. Again, the limitations of a leader class retail toy. It's understandable. They were able to pull it off here with the masterpiece. It actually has an opening hatch, which is also used for storage for Scorponok, which we'll get into afterwards because there's a lot of cool stuff going on with Scorponok. Now, and Scorponok 2 is not tiny. Again, because it's such a large figure, Scorponok is a decent size too this time around. It really scales with everyone else and could rip up some human figures. Now, Let's get into that robot mode. So again, scaling at 29 centimeters, fantastic detail. A lot of stuff is popping here. So what is different this time around with the robot mode? So first thing that pops in my mind is, so with the Studio Series 1, he had a little bit of a fold-out kind of chest gun thing, but it was very limited by what they could pull off in terms of the shape and everything. I think that they did a much better job this time around with the chest gun. And again, you could add the blast accessory to the chest gun too to add a little extra dynamic detail. The way that the 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 rotor engine that hovers behind his head, I found it was uh, sculpted way better this time around. But again, that's kind of to be expected with a masterpiece budget. So that was really cool too. Uh, looks really nice in all honesty, like just from little details. It's something that unfortunately was absent kind of in the original toys and as we got to the Studio Series 1, it started to become much more noticeable in terms of sculpting and detail. And now it's finally been perfected with the Masterpiece one. Then, let's talk about the use of die-cast parts. So, uh, Tomo-san here pretty much pointed out how there's a lot of die-cast parts here. They're going to have them in the, the, the knee guards. It's going to be used in the feet. And even there's going to be die-cast in Scorponok himself. So that's pretty cool, too. It adds more weight to the figure and gives it more of that premium kind of feel to it. Not to mention it's a larger figure, so you want to have a bit of a bottom-heavy kind of weight to the figure. That way, it doesn't fall over when you're doing all kinds of dynamic poses. And considering he has a lot of um, interesting accessories that are going to put weight on his arms and legs and back, you want to have that weight in the lower area to keep those poses. And let's talk about those accessories, because... Here's a big difference, too. So with the original Studio Series Blackout, you had his main big rotor, and then you had his rear rotor on his back rudder that detached and made a spinning weapon on his forearm. That was technically incorrect. Um, in the movie, he used his big rotor, which had all the different little, um, you know, I guess we'll call them propeller blades, to then be his main weapon on his arm. And... You could see that because it had a lot more blades. And when you use the Studio Series one, they say, well, use the rear rotor, which has only four propeller blades. It doesn't look as nice. It's kind of rinky dinky. And that is that. So, what they did this time around to kind of make it, you know, look nice because the rotor blades are way too big on the main propeller. So, they made a separate accessory, a second, more sh shorter rotor blade weapon that has the same amount of spokes to be used as a weapon on the side. So it's a little side accessory that's more screen accurate in terms of how it was, you know, I guess, depicted and how it looked in the Battle of Mission City at the end of the first movie. So that's pretty cool, too. 
All in all, accessory-wise, you get the two guns that he, that go in both the vehicle mode and in his robot mode, the two blast accessories that you could attach to the guns, the chest, or whatever, the rotor blade accessory, and technically, if you want to count it also, the Scorpion Auk with all his little die-cast parts on it. I think he looks great. I really do. I think that when you put it side by side with the Studio Series, you're going to see that there's a veneering and art evolution that's there that is more so just due to the fact of budget, not so much that there was a lazy designer or something like that. I think that Tomo Tatsumi here really was given the Studio Series and going, make this bigger and make this better, but don't really reinvent the wheel too much. And he did that, and he did a fantastic job. Now... Right now, like I said, pre-orders are probably happening right now on the Chinese side. Uh, it's 16.49 yuan, so that's about $257 USD, which is a pretty expensive pill to swallow. But keep in mind, number one, that's probably not the final price. Uh, we don't have a Hasbro Pulse price. For sure, it's probably going to be popping up on Hasbro Pulse. If not right now as I'm speaking, who knows? And also, historically, I mean, let's be real here, and we talk about Transformers Finance on the podcast all the time, movie masterpieces, because they do get Western releases, they do go on clearance. Megatron went on clearance many times. Optimus went on clearance. Uh, you know, Ratchet went on clearance. Starscream went on clearance. Uh, I think Jazz didn't go on clearance, but I mean, literally like six out of like the five, it's going to be five out of the six that we we've gotten in the past of the movie masterpieces have gone on clearance at some point. This guy's going to be big. This guy's going to be huge. Um, and he's going to be expensive. That usually leads to clearance. Let me tell you. And uh, he's also not like Megatron. He's a bad guy character and it's a Megatron character. It's not a Megatron character. So, or Starscream. So it's uh, more of a chance of a sale too. So if you are uh, on the fence, I'd wait a little bit. Uh, probably will work out better in the end for you to kind of wait it out. Now, Last thing I want to talk about is, well, what does this leave us now with movie masterpiece moving forward? Because there was this target of, okay, we're going to focus on movie 2007 stuff. They only broke away once to do a, a Bumblebee movie Optimus, and I get a feeling they might break away again in the future to do maybe one Rise of the Beast or two Rise of the Beast products. But all in all, it's been movie 2007 stuff. So what is left now to be done with movie masterpiece, at least from a movie 2007 standpoint? Well, on the Autobot side, it really is just, do they want to do old Camaro Bumblebee? Do they want to do that one? I think they will at one point. And this one's a bit of a stretch, but do they want to do the Autobot protoforms? I mean, I think it'd be cool. I think I'd dig it. But do they want to do the Autobot protoforms too? That'd be pretty cool to see if they want to make an, an attempt at that. Considering there's been a few Autobot movie protoform toys in the past, it shows that there is, you know, there is a bit of lore there in plastic to, excuse me, movie to plastic that could exist. Now, on the Decepticon side of things, um, we still have Brawl that needs to be done. We still have Bone Crusher that needs to be done. And technically, we still have Frenzy that needs to be done proper. You know, even Frenzy really, you know, Barricade didn't give us a, a, a Masterpiece Frenzy. I don't think we'll get a Masterpiece Frenzy unless he's like a, a very complex pack-in with somebody. Um, eh, who knows? You never know. But uh, currently, as we speak, the best movie frenzy, uh, movie frenzy, yeah, I guess the best movie frenzy toy you could probably get uh, that's transformable is either the fast action battler, which uh, has a terrible robot mode, but at least the alt mode does its thing. And uh, the best robot mode one, but it doesn't transform is the robot replica. So frenzy right now is still kind of in a in a bit of a purgatory stuck in between of getting a good toy. Uh, he's had a lot of other different versions throughout the years, but none of them really just do the job right. Maybe some people could argue the Human Alliance, but eh, I don't know. And uh, as for Blackout, I mean, this Masterpiece one that we have now, sooner or later we'll get a grind or a repaint from it. So I, I'm pretty sure this isn't the end of uh, the line for this mold. I'm pretty sure it's going to have a future whenever they get around to Revenge of the Fall and stuff, which, like I said, it's a very short list for 2007 movie. It's, it's literally just, again, old Camaro B, maybe the protoform, Brawl, Bone Crusher, and Frenzy. And then you got to move on to Revenge of the Fallen. You know, like I said, there's going to be a, a Rise of the Beast something probably in there at some point. But uh, we're going to be moving to a, a new movie probably at some point. And that blackout will probably be Grindor. Let me know what you think about this, guys. Pretty exciting stuff. Otherwise, fine detail. Great job, um, Tomo Tats uh, Tatsumi. Uh, welcome to the Takar Tomi team. And uh, 
Hopefully you, you find your place around here.